Okay, I think we're all set. Happy day. Okay, hi anybody that's tuning in today. Um, I think it's Thursday. You know what that means? Tomorrow's Friday. Uh, I hope everybody's had a good day. So I posted up an image earlier today. The cruise ship story. I just I'm having fun with, but at the same time I'm I've been really engaged today and doing other things. So uh, you know I thought why not break this up. And so because as soon as you make a decision like why not break this project up, you immediately, immediately start putting off the other things that you should be doing in accordance to that project because you're like, oh, I got this first part done. So uh, just silly, having fun arguing with myself. Um, sometimes uh, when you're doing, uh, you're writing something, your brain will go off in a train of thought. And in the course of doing so, you'll second guess bits that you've written or you'll <laughs> make responsive comments to text or dialogue that you've put down and uh, might not be as uh, aware of it that that you do it as as you uh, you might think and then when you are aware of it then it starts becoming subjective right uh, so anyhow this ends up being that where this first panel is really just the first panel uh, but it's turned into something a little bit more. And uh, I think that what it'll end up being is just uh, the first panel, the first half of the page. So, or the first page. And it, uh, it's going to end up being two pages. So, anyhow, there's that. So, uh, and then the original art is what I'm going to get cracking on. Uh, but before I do, uh, let me say thank you to all the patrons. And uh, these people are fantastic and uh, help to enable me to be able to do the thing that I do. So thanks very much, gang. You know, I don't expect a, a lot out of uh, these these streams. It's just an opportunity to reach out to the world while I'm doing what I'm doing. But uh, for those that do uh, pop in and say hi, thank you very much for doing so. And uh, as usual, uh, I have a, the magic book. And in this magic book, I write down any of the suggestions that I get from people, one page story suggestions, word prompts, um, just a piece of dialogue, or just a crazy idea that you think is cool. And uh, I write all those down into the book, and, uh, and then uh, I do them as, as one page stories. And so at present we're at uh, around our 113th page since the start of uh, the year so things are moving along things are moving apace anyhow with that said we're gonna get cracking I just got a notification by the way today that uh, big exciting news the proof will be in tomorrow so uh, for the book so I'll be showing that I believe so let's uh, pop up the uh, camera there's the start of the page let's jump in and uh, we can brighten this up a little bit I think yeah there we go a little better and uh, one more there we are one more so okay so this is where we're at with this story now um, this is an exercise in restraint for me and the reason I say it's an exercise in restraint for me is that uh, and I'm about to fail it drastically. I know that for a fact. Because doing this page is fun. And I want to have it be a little bit more of an elaborate story. But uh, I'm not overly worked up about about uh, timetables and due dates and what specific projects I'm on in any specific moment. The reason that I say that is um, you have to be fluid. And in the, what I'm doing in the mornings, I'm really locked in. And what I mean by really locked in is that, uh, you know, I've got things that I'm doing for others and I've got uh, obligated obligation commissions and projects. And I try to do those in one part of the day. And then the other part of the day is where I try to do whatever it is that I'm doing. And, and so, you know, like the one page stories or just sketching or whatever it is. But, uh, 
I don't have an awful lot of regulation on I have to specifically work on this this thing in the afternoons because when it comes to the one-page stories I lean really hard into the intuitive aspect of those and so if you have the facility and your scheduling time to enable that for yourself where you could parcel your time so that the things that you need to do are X amount of your working period your creative output period okay let's call it that instead of working because it sounds uh, so that scares some people so in your creative output period if you can parcel your time so that you spend X amount working on the projects for others and the things that you're obliged to do and you can spend X amount on whatever thing strikes your fancy in that moment then I think you'll find a little bit of fulfillment in that even if it's just five seconds of doodling or five minutes of doodling and an hour and a half on whatever else give yourself those opportunities give yourself those mental health breaks uh, oh I'm sorry I'm missing comments uh, hi Tori Tori says hi Christopher and all welcome aboard Tori um, so with that in mind you know this project is the the, the one-page stories aren't obligations for me um, but I do them each afternoon and I do them and this is why you'll see me switch whatever materials that I'm using to draw something because um, that helps it strip the routine out of it the regulation out of it where uh, every day I'm just drawing in, in pencil the page I did yesterday is uh, uh, let me see if I can pull it up. Yeah, give me a sec. This is uh, the page from yesterday. It's the Hillbilly Scientist page that I started coloring. Um, so this page I drew uh, during the, in the that morning. I just sat down and it just spilled out of me, and it, and the page is drawn at eleven by uh, seventeen. So this was a lot of fun, but I don't. You know, and then today I posted this thing about this boat, and, and which is really just the first panel of the the two page I the two page story that I'm doing right now about the person with the jelly plate. Woman arrested on a cruise ship for a strange jelly thing in her purse. Husband denies ever seeing it. So in this two page short story that I'm doing on this I just was playing so much I had uh, I had fun coloring this boat and that time that parcel time I had I just I, I was it just got swallowed up with the obligation part today and yet I got this much done of it and uh, and I'm ready to jump in continue uh, on with the one page story and it sort of allows me to recognize that maybe maybe uh, it's more interesting for folks to walk through the penciling process on something than it is for me to just do the breakdowns of it like I did yesterday and uh, and then go well you'll see it tomorrow so I thought we'd, we'd try doing that a little bit of fun so already uh, so getting into it uh, already I made a subjective change because as I broke down the suggestion into four parts okay woman arrested cruise ship she had a strange jelly thing in her purse husband denies seeing it those are the four points so I broke those down so the cruise ship is what I decided would be the first panel but rather than doing the first panel at the top like I laid out in our initial sketch I did the first panel on the side like so and uh, I hope that looks like a boat probably better if I looked at pictures of boats but <laughs> there's our boat and uh, and then uh, uh, the the next panel that we have here is the the speaker system that goes to the ship and the the notification the announcement of uh, ladies and gentlemen if you could return to your cabins you know from the captain so that's there but I've moved it up above onto the side of where our pan our panel for the boat is and this is the same drawing that is now uh, this. So there's our boat. And uh, I had some fun coloring that and doing all the glares and stuff like that. So that was fun. 
so now we've got our announcement panel is done as it's done and next we've got our uh, setup for the captain on the microphone and then a bunch of the ship staff are going to be knocking on the doors of cabins so that's all, all set up to go and uh, yeah you know I uh, I'm kind of pleased with it but the way that you can see that I've broken it down now is that this works this image as as wrote works st structurally as a landscape format page and uh, the second half of this narrate of this narrative okay this this uh, three panels here would work as in the same structural shape so that it becomes a two-page story and these are the sort of creative decisions we need to allow ourselves to be open to and you know I say it's a one-page story uh, process but the truth is um, it doesn't have to be I just call it one page story because you know l largely if I if I can execute an idea in a page great but if I want to play with it further I'm gonna do that so it's not that it uh, you know it, it, it betrays the uh, the notion of doing these shorts because it's still a short story it's not like this one page story is the idea well now I'm doing it as 15 pages you know I have to just sit there through it with me uh, Tori says it's so helpful seeing how you visualize and then sketch your layouts uh, you're learning so much great if there's anything I can do to help anybody I don't by any means express that I'm any kind of expert on this sort of jazz but you know um, I got a I got a handle on how I'm approaching things, and if that handle helps others in figuring out how they want to do what they're doing. Keen is a jelly bean. All right. So, with this in mind, we've got established our first panel, the boat. We've got established our second panel, the announcement. There's the speakers. And so, as I've got it set up now with these kids playing shuffleboard with their mom somebody walking up the side of the boat here's you know the open face side of the boat and so the same way as I did some clouds for that first panel and the coloring stage I'll do those clouds in this area too and you'll have an understanding of what that is because you know what it is because you just saw it portrayed on this panel and it's just a continuation of that idea here it could even be so sneaky as to just copy this part of it and stick it in there you know just so it's completely obvious about what it actually is um, but again those are the creative choices we make along the way so with that in mind uh, the next thing that we have is for our captain to be making an announcement over this the PA it's called a PA um, and uh, about uh, the problem at hand and that problem at hand is that somebody has brought some kind of strange jelly creature onto the ship and the crew needs to investigate that because we can't be having strange uh, living creatures being brought onto the ship and it's it's unfair to the creatures this is the supposition that the captain's operating on in our little story uh, now, for those in the know, what this is actually referring to is um, a friend of the channel here who is a really faithful jelly plating person, and they went for a holiday with their their husband on a cruise ship, and the ongoing joke was that, that if they could take their jelly plate with them, they would might try to do so. And jelly plating is one of the processes that I do to make all the sort of complicated background information and I do a lot of the mixed media stuff on uh, let's see Tori says you do that if you're doing it digitally just cut and paste it makes uh, life that bit easier sure well that's the thing about coloring digitally um, as opposed to you know if I'm drawing it you can see I'm making some marks here on the side really light gesticulative marks for the clouds and then the finish on that comes together in uh, in the digital, right? So you can enhance that and build it up a little bit more, but give it more depth and, and shape with uh, 
the color application. So we could just continue that on over in here. Now, if I'm going to do it traditionally, yeah, I'd use inks, you know, but I would try to emulate the same design as I did over here. But there's definitely beautiful simplifications that come along when we um, allow ourselves to not just work traditionally, but to work digitally as well. I, uh, my voice is doing better than it did yesterday. And thank you uh, for, for putting up with me trying to work out of my sickness. I'm feeling better every day. And, uh, you know, here we go. So uh, now I've got this set up. So I'm going to take my face off of the screen for a second so that you can see a little more of the of the work area. And uh, I'll leave the, the logo up there because who cares. Uh, <laughs> Robert Betts is John Deere rolling on the floor laughing. You bet you, buddy. I like my John Deere hat. This was uh, Murray's dad's hat. I like this hat. It's, it's a really comfortable hat. <laughs> okay, but we better explain this one. For those that don't know, John Deere is a tractor company that makes tractors, and this is their bright green. Please go ahead. That green is blinding. <laughs> there you go. You'll, you'll be okay. Uh, now you have to deal with this green. Okay. So let's let's continue on. So we've established where we are on things with the where we've laid out our story in this quick thumbnail that we did yesterday from our suggestion, breaking it down into points. We've executed the first two panels now, and our third panel is the captain speaking over the microphone and saying, "Okay, ladies and gentlemen." Blah, 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 blah. You know, dooby 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 doo. That's what they say. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so let's uh, yeah, let's give this a try and see what we can do. We're gonna put uh, our captain. Um, right here in our first panel, and the reason I'm trying to figure out the placement of the captain first is that. We need to, when you're drawing a piece that's going to have text and words fused together, you need to account for that there's space here for text or the titling, and that there's, you know, uh, you draw your focus of direction to the the key element in the panel, not just with the visual, with the, the picture itself, but uh, we can have all of this space in here in order to say, hello ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. Uh, I need to draw something to your attention. And then we move down to our next panel where the captain continues the speech. But you know it's the captain because we first establish, you know it's the captain speaking here because we first established this dialogue that's continued by this character. So people put two and two together and realize that this is a person who's talking. Thank you people. So let's uh, let's continue on that front and uh, see what we can come up with. I think that our plan yesterday about having the captain uh, speaking on the microphone and then the orderlies or the workers on the ship checking door to door is uh, is the idea that uh, we started with. I think it works, and I think we'll just continue doing that. So. Um, I want to change this up a little bit. I started drawing this in, and it just feels a little too static with what uh, the people above are doing, where they're sort of viewing out towards the uh, audience participants. So let's have uh, our captain looking down at his controls. And so we'll put him in here and. Uh, and in that way, it gives a little bit of a shakeup in in characters that everybody isn't just all standing there statically, uniformly looking out at the reader, because it tends to make for a boring story. So, um, so I'm going to have him looking down at the control board, but let's get his expression in first. Um, think he might need a mustache. Just something about a boat captain like this fella just tells me he needs a mustache. Where's Derwent gone? There he is. 
What's the sound of my eraser makes? All right, so, and then now we can have him speaking to the um, the microphone on his his console here. First, let's give him his little captain -y hat. I'm not sure how captain's hat goes. I'll have to look this up in a second, but we got the gist of it here. Uniform on here. Maybe we'll put a vest on him. I don't know that they wear vests. Well, he's going to wear a vest. Maybe they wear jackets. I'm not entirely sure. But putting him in a vest. Comfy captain. Comfy cruise ship captain. So, yeah, so I'm doing my best to keep uh, catch up on a lot of the. Um, suggestions that have come in over time I'm trying to go back and continue some of the ones that uh, came in a bit ago and uh, with that in mind we're getting there uh, recently the start of the week I posted all of these things that have been gathering up uh, for our, my weekend pages for uh, for our patron supporters there that's a big old appreciation I don't wanna I wanna keep up on that, so So we'll give him a we'll give him a little bit of fold. Press a little bit darker so you can see a little more clearly as he's uh doing his thing. And these lines that I'm making, I still wanna make sure that you're able to see them, so but just putting some folds in the fabric of his uh, his captain's uniform here as he's doing his control business. Uh, what oh, it's Jim. Jim says, uh, just popped in to say hello. Hopefully you're feeling well. I'm feeling better. Thank you, Jim, for asking. That's very really nice of you. Thanks for popping in. So yeah, so tomorrow I just checked my messages and I got the update that uh, proof will be in tomorrow. The what? You'll see. I'm excited to, to just showcase this. I'm learning uh, all kinds of stuff about promotion. SEOs it's called. So there we go. We had uh, a whole bunch of plans for this weekend that we're going to try to you know, get all these things done that we weren't able to get done because uh, old sick Christopher here was putting a wrench in the gear. My wife celebrated her 20th anniversary of working at her job. So that's good news. And her company has a new executive director so that's so big news okay so I'm gonna put uh, his hands down here on the uh, console as he's turning a button There we go. And uh, I'll look up. Uh, maybe I just won't put them in a captain's hat because I don't know what they look like. And I, you know, I don't think they all wear them, to be honest. Maybe I'll put his hat under his hand, on his arm. That's maybe what I should do. Yeah, let's do that.
So I had a good meeting this morning, getting all kinds of stuff ready. I, uh, I don't think I'm spoiling anything by telling everybody that I, uh, I'm the art director guy for uh, the London Comic Con here in, in London, Ontario, Canada. And uh, we have signed Kevin Eastman to be a guest of honor this year, as well as Mr. Bill Clinton. And uh, I'm really excited about these two fellas coming out. There'll be all kinds of more people. Ben Bishop, who's doing the last Ronin comic series. And Derek Laufman will be coming. These are a lot of fun, talented people. And so a lot of these, we're going to have a whole bunch of conversations about creative process. And uh, uh, there'll be a workshop and an animated film viewing with about how to be successful at animation and all kinds of cool stuff that we're working out and signing on all the stuff on the dotted line now. But uh, it's a good feelings all around. So, okay, so I'm going to put, am I still in frame? Let me move this up a little bit. So I'm going to put the console here for, and so what I'm trying to think of is I want this to be within some kind of perspective, but I'm going to bend the console just a little bit. And the way that I can sell that is by, if I have the bend here, I'm going to have the bend there as well. And then, so the idea here is that at his captain's console that has all of his doodattery and whatnot as he's operating his his boat. It's official term boat. Um, we'll put all of these controls here. I was going to put a coffee cup there, but let's be honest, that would be irres irresponsible of a person to put the coffee cup on top of their or sitting over top of their mechanical panel. So now I'm putting in some dials and, and they're called greebles is the official term. It's all of the foofery little bit that you put into the image or this or the model or whatever it is that you're putting together depicting something um, like a spaceship or or whatever it is and so all these little ephemera ephemeral pieces that look like they have some kind of function, but truth is, is that the simulation's a function, right? And there's a part of me that wants to change this a little bit. Although I don't have a lot of room to do it, I'm going to, just because I want to see a monitor here. I don't know why. It doesn't mean anything to anybody but me. But, uh, these are just little decisions I'm making along the way. So now we're putting in, so this is what his hand is doing here, is that he's tuning a greeble on the, uh, the control panel as he's, as he's talking to folks. So, so we'll put uh, some more bits, bits of business here. So I'm going to put another monitor here. trying to think of yeah just laying this out for myself where some of these lines might go on the on the surface here and again this is this is the choices that we make in our creative storytelling is all of this necessary yes and no what's important is that people understand that this captain who's been talking through the speakers is doing so from this position. So, with that in mind, we just need it to resemble on some level that it's uh, a control panel. And then, just to be additionally cheeky, I'm putting his microphone mounted into the control panel. Now, somebody's going to look at this and go, uh, that's not how it goes, Chris. And I'm like, well, you know, it is in this drawing. <laughs> 
because it just helps to sell to those that might not be picking up on things that he is talking. So if we have to show a microphone someplace as his dialogue continues, we you know and we've linked this angle. See mouth angle of the microphone. It's a sub subliminal thing that makes you realize that these two things go together. And so we'll put his uh, his vest here. Now was I, I was going to, oh yes, I was, I'm sorry. I was going to put his hat under his arm, just to, just to take that a little bit, that symbolism a little bit further. Why isn't he wearing his hat? Well, he's holding his hat right now. I will put his, uh, I think they have laurel leaves on their hats. So when we color this, the yellow should pop out a little bit in there. And then we'll put a little bit of uh, texture marking on the, the brim of the hat there. And there is Captain's hat under his arm. And we'll continue the rest of his personage. And so sometimes it's just about going inside of going inside of our head and thinking about the different parts of any given thing. You know, whether it's uh, dials or knobs or buttons or whatever it is, even if you're trying to figure out what the controls would be on a boat or some other thing and all that comes to your mind is the controls at the front of the Millennium Falcon in Star Wars. Let's draw those. Who's to say you're wrong? <laughs> you know, I'm sure somebody's going to go, that's not how it looks. That's fine. But right now we're worried about just getting down these pieces of information so that we can get on with telling our story. And any of these actions that we do really are to enable us to do what the important part is, and that's tell the story. So don't get overly worked up about this all having to be perfectly executed. Just do your best. Having fun. So by putting these little by and these little cubes that we've already got two rows of here behind there it gives you a sense that this is in the foreground now. So we'll put some more spinners, little dials on here. And uh, it just gives you the idea that uh, this is what he's touching over here as a dial. So. There we go. So, whoops, making a mess. So here's our captain speaking in the sink. So in order to sort of sell this uh, with the pieces of information that really aren't going to matter, I'm going to put in behind him, and this is the part that's going to be covered up anyways. So why bother doing it? I'm glad you asked that. I'm drawing these windows in because by drawing them in, it allows me to put my word balloons wherever and whatever size and however much text they need anywhere that I want in the image because I'm not locked into it having to be in that corner because I haven't drawn that corner in. Uh, I'm always surprised by the amount of people that I'll, I'll meet who lay their dialogue down first and have to fit their art around it. It works for them, it does, but it sort of locks them in on that's where it's going to be now. And, you know, they're not uh, giving themselves the opportunity to see how much further they can take that.
so I'm putting in the window and the captain's what is this called the captain's cabin crew cabin oh the bridge I think it's called the bridge <coughs> sorry missing stuff uh, that's where it says it sounds amazing do you tend to overwork the paint it says the paint or just add the right amount of detail well I I try to populate it with the basic gist of things you know I'm not worried about all of this these textures and in, in the surfaces and stuff like that right now I'm just trying to get the basic gist that here he is on the on the bridge of his ship talking into his control console and making an announcement to the that's that's really what I'm trying to get across here and so if that means we've got to add a little bit more to this so that people can recognize that oh this is the the bridge of the boat and you can see there's certain little official parts of them like I'm putting a clipboard up on the wall with some paper attached to it there's a couple reasons that I'll do stuff like this one is so that I can put the text wherever I want like I've already detailed and two is this little clipboard here and if you can recognize that that's what these are as a viewer by putting them on the wall back there it sort of starts implying a sense of depth and a sense of activity but is there a lot of detail required right now in this image not really no um, I can run a line like so in the background so as I'm coloring this that's the ocean so now we can apply a sense of depth by putting this value of the of the water similar to the value that we applied in our first panel image that we colored and uh, and it gives a sense of distance you know so here's our first panel where he's saying oh ladies and gentlemen uh, tonight's dinner at the will be tuna at the, the uh, captain's table anyways so now in our layout we've established that the next panel is going to be the ship's crew traveling about trying to check rooms to see if anybody's got this jelly thing in their purse or in their cabin or whatever the case may be so that's uh, that's our objective in the moment and if there's any questions or anything like that you know please feel free to uh, to ask away well, Chris what's wrong with you <laughs> I don't know um, okay so let's put a couple of these crew and I haven't really established a uniform for people so I think that we'll just uh, make it up on the fly let's have a crew person knocking on a door uh, oh how you doing Frank roll for Taraco ladies and gentlemen Frank Salazar how you been sir Frank is uh, the writer, artist, creator of Captain Goggles, which is a fun, fun read. I enjoy your work, Frank. Okay, so here is our first crew person. And I will put some folds in their jacket. And uh, we'll have them knocking on the door of the cabins here we'll have them searching throughout and we'll have a couple of other crew people with them but let's uh, let's just start drawing this person in and then we'll get the door there and then we'll draw a smaller person in the distance uh, to show you know that this is going on 
through all the rooms down the hallway. Frank, are you still with us? What are you working on, sir? If anybody wants to talk about uh, any of the stuff that you're working on, please feel free to do so. I'm also trying to encourage people talk, telling others about what they're working on. We'll be having a special stream some point this weekend as I show the proof the new project. How do you know where to put the words? Is it instinct or do you have a previous scheme in your mind? Okay, that's a really good question. Um, let, me, let me show you something. First, let me figure out where I put uh, my note paper. Excuse me, one second. I'll just get some more. All right, so here is a fun way of looking at it. And uh, I'll do this in a marker so that ideally, hello, oh, you can see it. There we go. So if a, what have we got? I just finished uploading a video on Roll for Taraco. I printed out questions for Toastmasters event tomorrow at college. Going to be asking students impromptu questions to help them get started. Oh, that's fantastic, Frank. Just returned from the library and about to make lunch. What are we having? Okay. So, uh, how do you know where to put the words? Is it instinct or do you have a previous scheme in your mind? So, uh, are we in frame? We are. If this is, this is a portrait format, okay? portrait. And this, which I use a lot as well, is the landscape format. Now, in both of these instances, either chicken or beef, there you go. In both of these instances, the point is to get the viewer's eye from that top left panel, to the bottom right. And it's the same thing in this other format. Now, the, the funny, silly bit of fun of the page that I did yesterday or a couple days ago, is that I did it uh, what looked like the landscape format, but I did it <laughs> diagonally across. It was a combination of the two. And somebody called that the planescape form <laughs> format. Not real. This isn't really a thing. <coughs> Anyhow, so top left, bottom right. Top left, bottom right. This is the Western format on how to move ourselves through the page. And so the idea is that whatever, there's two different elements we're using here. One is the visual, and two is the textual. And we're doing those in a sequential series of, like a sec sequential series of images and words. So we want to tell a story using these two different conveyances. And when you put those two together, right, it equals sequential storytelling. Now, whether it's the textual is actually, um, if, if it's the large, the visual images record, like uh, um, illustrated in a sequential format or filmed or whatever it is, and then instead of having texture or textual aspects of it where you've got words on there, if people are speaking or there's sound effects and stuff like that, this applies as well for the two things in, in, in fusion together. So it's also sequential media. <coughs> now, in this case, in the case of comic books, I guess, we want to move your eye from here to here. <coughs> Pardon me, i got to get a drink. How long is it going to be a while before they can recover? Hmm. So with this in mind, you want to figure out a way to put down a combination of these two things in order to get this to this and happening. So if you've got a person talking, and you've got, so you want to have the words moving in this direction, okay? And if you look at a page as being a bunch of images that move like this across the page, so that we want, or this is how we want the eye of the, the reader to move across the page as we divide our page up into three levels in this example. Okay, so you need to figure out a way to 
to, to move that line across. And you can do it with the pictures, or you can do it with the words. I'll show, uh, let's do the last couple of pages. Uh, so this is the thing I posted today. And, uh, whoops, I'm so sorry, wrong button. So this is the thing I posted today. Now with the, the image that I posted today, okay, it starts in that top left corner with the text. And the text carries your eye in a little bit of a zigzaggy pattern down to that bottom right side. Okay, it's there's no uniform images to go along with each of these. There's one static image that represents the idea I want you to focus on, but then the text carries you through a bit of a, a conversation here, a bit of a conversation into a story. So that's one way we can we can utilize those two things together in fusion. And as long as we're remembering this principle, okay, of the top left to the bottom right. As long as we're remembering this principle, then we can try different things. So this is one method in place. And this hillbilly science one, even though it has this crazy uh, kookaburra accent that I have on there, accent, I'm sorry, angle is the word I meant. So even though it's got this kooky angle on it, if you notice that the words are leading you from the left to the right of the image, right? And then the visual images are moving you from the top left down to the bottom right. Everything is on that angle, taking you down that 45 degree path to the bottom corner. But I'm, but even though the art is all directing you down in that 45 degree way, <coughs> pardon me, there we go, I cleared it up. Even though that, that angle is leading in that 45 degree angle down to the bottom right, the text is leading is actually leading you right across the center of the page. And so that fusion between the two carries your eye the way I want it to go. Now, for interest's sake, while I'm coloring this page, because I haven't this is just the basic colors that I put down now, but while I'm coloring this page, there are three wooden signs mounted on trees in the center at the top of this page. And that intention there is to put signs on there like, yeah, go on now, you ain't welcome here. You know, like silly little warning signs like that. And I've decided not to put those in, in the word balloons, because it'll misdirect your eye. And decided not to have those written down in the ink layer because again they'll be too strong and they'll redirect your eye so in the coloring process i'll do a subtle application of lettering in there that says git but it sort of blends into the coloring part of it so it doesn't strip you away from where i want your eye to go which is across that page and so it's these kinds of decisions that we need to make in the process of of carrying the eye from the top left to the bottom right using the visual aspects of the drawings and the words. Pictures, words, maybe that's easier. Pictures, words. And as soon as you can figure out all kinds of different ways you can do that, then the shape of the page, the shape of the panels on the page shouldn't really matter. You can do it, you, you still need to move the eye from here to here if you're doing all kinds of random bits of business on your page with the different shapes that you've got and and how all of that stuff flows together as long as you're moving it from here to here you should be okay so it's a it's practice 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 as it is with anything else it's just you know repetition and things like that we start getting better grasps on things so uh, as long as we keep those well, color as long as we keep those in mind so in this one now in the original 
image that I posted, I have of the boat panel, I have all of this text moving like so in that panel. But in truth, as I do the, I utilize this panel as the first one of this, this, this is the page, this is the structure of the page. On this panel, I'd probably put my name down here in the bottom corner, underneath where the logo is right now. And this will be the title. And then the first pieces of dialogue, right here and right here, and then a continuance of those pieces of dialogue right here, and a little di triangular shape direct, whoops, I'm sorry, a triangular right here, right here, right here. Start, you know, here's the title, couple pieces of dialogue, continuation of dialogue, a little word, word pointer going towards the speaker, and then the finishing of said dialogue, word, word pointer from the balloon going to the captain, and that says the captain said this, said this, there's the title. And so what I'm doing, even though the art is a little bit staggered in the way that the panels are laid out, that, 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 which is counterintuitive to what we're saying about top left, bottom right, that text makes your eye read it this way. So you gotta figure out one way or the other to be the dominant of those two things for directing the eye. And since the text gets laid over the art, the text really directs the, the reader in the way that, way that they're going. If there's no words, or if the art is so flashy and the text is either too thick and dense or it's too sparse, then the person, the reader, is going to spend all their time with the visual elements and maybe not even read the story, maybe not even read the words. But because we're applying this as a whole, we're applying both the pictures and the words in conjunction with one another to create that new third kind of language of the fusion of these two things together, pictures and words. So I hope that makes sense to folks and that uh, that helps out. Uh, Riri's here. How you doing, Riri? So let's continue on with our panels. We've got announcement through the speaker, captain making the announcement from the deck, and rather than, we talked about this decision yesterday, rather than illustrating the captain saying to all of the crew, listen crew, I want you to go check room to room. We've skipped over that. And as the captain is speaking over top of this panel, we'll carry his dialogue over here. We've got crew members knocking on cabin door saying, excuse me, you know, have you seen a lady with a jelly thing? And that's, uh, that's a piece of fun there. But we've, what I mean by fun is that's a piece of fun story, but, but visually we don't, we've, we've moved the story forward in time by skipping right to where they're knocking on doors. And the narration going over top of it is just continuing to explain why are these people knocking on doors. So there we go. Okay, so here is somebody at the door, knocking away, excuse me, hello. And then uh, down the hall, okay, so we're going to play with this angle of a person. Now if we move them up higher, okay, so that their hairline is similar in height to this person's, and that we have them also knocking on a door, but reduce their size so that this is this, uh, this sort of uh, subversive thing that we're doing right now where we're showing the, <coughs> excuse me, oh, I don't want to do short the sleeves because the people playing shuffleboard have short sleeves, so let's give them nice, long sleeve jackets. I'll put a little fold in the elbow there. So, um, this little subversive thing tells you that it's farther down the hall because the person is reduced in size. And because as human beings, we know that when people are smaller, they tend to be far, farther away. 
we fill in the balance of that ourselves. We fill in that that realization of how it works in the real world. We just insert that notion into the story that we're telling. So we want to not have the same pose. We want to have this person standing differently from the one before. We'll give them the same outfit, but we don't want them standing the same way. They're different people. Different people stand different ways. I am the size of a gorilla. I stand resting on my knuckles, hoping for bananas. Okay, now to continue this. So if we look at this panel, okay, in a perspective like this, our next person is going to be up here in our foreground. And again, we look at the size of the noggins. One of people's heads tells us that this person's head is this big, this much bigger than the previous person. Just to give a solid sense of scale, this is what we're doing. And just to give a solid sense of depth of this panel. And then as we draw in the, the, the doors and everything else behind them, it all makes sense for us. Part of my stuff down here. And I'm just searching here for some of the folds and the like and the uniform that the person here is wearing. And just putting this information in here just to make the shirt look a little more interesting and give the body a little bit of form. I hope that these things that I'm yibber yabbering about are helpful for folks. So we're putting him in a similar outfit to the ladies. However, where they have little jackets that go over their skirts, he's going to have his little jacket that goes over top of his trousers there. And if we decide to make these black skirts, we want to make sure we carry that over so that we know it's a similar attire, uniform and then we'll put him in the same coloring as well. And then we'll fold his, we'll bend his arm here as he's at this door talking to this person. So next we need to get out a uh, ruler and uh, we know that this hallway is moving this way through the image, okay? and that the doorways are moving this way in the image and they're all receding back to the same same vanishing points which is very loose with how I do it I realize that uh, a lot of people mark those out first whereas I just sort of go ah, here-ish which maybe could improve my perspective if I took a little more time for it but so now we got to think about what are some of the things that might be in a hallway on a cruise ship and having never taken a cruise ship I don't know what the details are in a hallway so I can look up some reference for that or uh, you know sort of make something up. We're fixing our pitch on this door. And uh, we're going to run our lines down. And the reason that I'm having this line cut through the center of the hand is so that you get the idea that that hand is in over top of that space. This space is farther back than this hand because we know for a fact that when we see things covering things up in the real world that tends to mean that one thing is closer to us than the other 
looking at the width of the, the door frame, I'm going to draw the, the frame around the door there. See the little number for the cabin? We'll continue this along up here so that now there's consistency in our doorways in the hallway here. And uh, thinking of the spacing on the, the door, here's where the extent of our doorway goes. And so now we've got a hallway. And then of course we've got to put a ceiling line in too, right? There we go. So, uh, and of course let's put uh, our ceiling line moving like so. That feels comfy. Now, if we want to be cheeky, we can put some hash lines moving across horizontally so that it implies that the surface is moving horizontally. And then whatever the pattern is that is on these walls is moving vertically. So that lets our reader know that this part is moving up and down, the top part is moving across. And then the floor would be the same. We'd have some, if we put some horizontal lines in there, or some kind of floor pattern that uh, doesn't detract from the fact that, that this is a uh, three dimensional place we're trying to represent. So the floor pattern, whatever it is, it can't be too confusing for people. Better do some, maybe if we can, leave it a base color. You can do some fun developments like shading from dark to light or whatever you want in the coloring process. But uh, this is how we're going about it. So here is our cabin doors. Sorry, I followed that angle. And uh, here are our crew knocking on said doors. And there's our bit of storytelling that takes place for these three our first three elements there. Four elements, I'm so sorry. The boat, the speaker, the captain, the crew. The boat, the speaker, the captain, this microphone, ordering the crew to do what the crew is doing. So there's our first page of breakdowns. Simplistic line work, yes, not a lot of detailing, but we're trying to get across the storytelling and then the flourish comes second. Now other people will draw the initial images is very dynamic and, and having a lot more variation in their angles and things like that. That's great. That's perfect. As long as it doesn't detract from the story. Have fun with the way that you're depicting the images and the events. Just as long as they tell the story move the reader forward and don't detract from what it is that's trying to happen. So there's our first half of our page, folks. Uh, or there's our first landscape format page. That uh, And so what I do now at this point is that I'll scan it. And just somebody asked me about this yesterday. I got a dress message about this one. Now, here's so what I'll do is I'll do oftentimes I will do this. One is the traditional art. Now whether that's line art, like we've just done, which is just the penciling, right? Penciled, maybe it's inked, whatever it is, it's, it's one process of the art. And then two, I'll scan the images, okay? And then three, I'll do digital finishes. Now that's a pretty ballpark statement. What I mean by that is I will, so I've uh, uh, converted art to a layer 
you know, a, a basically a see-through layer, right? Good, good writing. Okay, so now it's transparent, so all you see is the black line art, you know, that is from the penciled image. And all that white stuff disappears and just becomes clear. So that when you do the color layer below that, below that, I'm sorry. So coloring, are there at that point. And so what I'm relating to in coloring or effects, I'll show you. There we go. So uh, here is, um, I got our pencil layer done, and then I've scanned it, put it into the computer, and then converted that to a see-through layer. So that's just the, the black line art that's down there. And then underneath that, watch on the right side of the screen for the little blue line. So this is our art, okay? And then underneath that is our color. Now, if I take out this white base and our color, you can see how you can see right through. That checker pattern tells you you can see right through. Everywhere that there was white, it's gone. It's just the black line art, or whatever color line art that we choose. The boat today, this is actually a charcoal and umber value that you can see. Hold on, I'll kick the color out. So that's a charcoal color, not a black. So it's a little more subdued. There's the color layer underneath. If I take the charcoal out, you can just see the color layer. And then over top of that, I put some fun glares and, you know, little punches of light. And then of course that text sits on top of the visual image itself. And because the visual image is static, the text moves the eye around. <coughs> but we've divided this up into layers. Um, sorry, it's, that's just a clear page. So if we can, we can take off, there goes my name. There goes the title. There goes all the words. There goes the color, which is underneath the art layer. Blank page, color, art on top, text on top, title on top, name on top. So the coloring effect is the next stage that I'll do. I'll go back to our note. Oops, so sorry. There we go. So coloring or effects is what I just showed you. And followed by the text and title and then number six make sure your name is on it be proud of the things you do folks I, I make this a special point and I have the little name stamp that I put on the pages each time because I have historically forgotten to sign so many pieces that I've done, and I'm sure there's pieces out there that are people like, I like this. Who did it? Oh, it was a tall guy. So, so here we are. We've got our green line art. So now I would scan this, and I'll move in just so you can see a little more clearly. So I will now scan this, okay, and I will put it in the computer. I will convert it into just that line art, so the white all disappears, and then I can color it from underneath and it just fills in those spaces between the black lines. But I can also color it on top as well and add extra kinds of effects like the light shining off that boat in the distance effect that I put on this page, the previous, the pre previous image. That's the gist of it, folks. That's the sort of breakdown. That's the sort of follow through on that. So I'll get this scanned, get it colored, and get this posted. And, uh, and then I'll finish the second half of it. Now we know in the second half, and there's those things for those that might want to screen capture that, All right? There's the processes that I go through for most pages. Now, when I say traditional art, line up or line art, the penciled pages, the ink pages, or 
um, mixed media art. And when I say the coloring or effects, I can have layers in there that are also mixed media, uh, mixed digital media applications. Right? Like textures and things like that. Okay, make sure your name's on it, it's the last thing. So this is our first page, already set to get scanned and finished and colored in a landscape format with text on it. And we've already got the breakdowns for the second half of what was initially drawn on one very complicated page. And the second half is the captain being called out by his crew to these quarters where they've discovered the lady that has the weird jelly thing in her possession and uh, it turns out it's an arts and craft tool jelly plate a jelly plating tool a jelly plate and um, her husband didn't know she brought it with her on their trip so that'll be the second part of the page and she'll say you know it's not I haven't done anything wrong it's for making crafts making art and that's our resolution to the page and we've done all of these elements that were suggested for it Okay, so I thought I'd walk through some of this process stuff today just to try to make some sense for folks about taking an idea, roughing out what we can do with it, and developing up a narrative in the process of doing so, and then following through and putting down re those representational elements, those visual elements that tell the story as we've structured it. And after we scan it, we're going to put the words on it. And then we're going to use those words to direct the eye the where, the, where that we want it to go. And so we'll move those the eye across here, down through here, and over to here. And there's the bottom finishing point. Whether it's the last piece of dialogue, or if it's just the sign, the name stamp. That resolves the page. And then the next part of it, we continue on for the next two pieces of information that we need to get across. And that is the lady's got this thing in her purse and her husband didn't know she brought it at all. And it ends with her, of course, getting arrested by mistaken circumstances. So fun in the sun, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. With that in mind, I, uh, once again, I appreciatively uh, ask that if anybody wants to get engaged in this process, if you've got ideas you want to suggest, if you've got word prompts or anything like that, please feel free to throw them at me, uh, and we'll give it a go. Put it in the comments for this video or on the social media posts that I put out on Facebook, Instagram, Patreon. Patreon, I also show original art and give additional one-page stories that I do on weekends. This week I put up, I think, seven or eight pages that I haven't shown on Instagram or Facebook. The links for all that jazz is below in the video if you're interested in that. Um, and I, the other thing I always advocate is that if you yourself are interested in taking these suggested ideas and trying to come up with your own short story based on this, I'd love to see it. I highly encourage people to do that. There's no comparison of, you know, Bob and Betty. Everybody's going to do it differently. Everybody's going to have unique perspectives. Everybody's going to have a unique visual and narrative voice that comes through. And that's the beauty of somebody suggesting an idea and a bunch of people working from it is that, uh, you know, the diversity of the responses to that. And at the end of the day, I'm not you and you're not me. So I'd love to see the differences. Love it. Okay, with that in mind, I'm going to sign off for now. Now, tomorrow, I'll be popping in at some point. I'm not entirely sure the time yet, but there will definitely be something coming up tomorrow because I'm, I've already had it confirmed that I'll be getting something in the mail in the morning. And I'm very excited to show that to you and to share that with you and, uh, and to talk about where things are going next on this project that I've been doing. 
Okay, with that in mind, thank you very much everybody that's taken part and, and joined in today. And uh, I'll be back again tomorrow at some point, and I hope to see you then. Thanks very much, everyone. Bye for now.